The Bridgestone Canadian Superbike Championship once again calls the birthplace of champions home as a fierce battle looms between race one winner Ben Young and a deeply talented field of challengers with no shortage of drama possible through the twists and turns of Shannonville Motorsport Park, anything is possible. Feet on the pegs, visor down, it's time to go racing in Shannonville. Marshall Ferguson alongside Colin Fraser. We are here at Shannonville Motorsport Park. It is round one of the Bridgestone Canadian Superbike Championship, and it is an early lead in the Economy Loop Entire Pro Sport Bike Division. For who else, Ben Young? Well, who else is an interesting statement because a few days ago, we didn't think Ben was racing in this class on his Suzuki GSX-R750. Uh, he controlled the race fairly easily, I would say. Sebastian Tremblay on another Suzuki made a, a late push. Elliot Vier on the Ducati was part of the story. Spectacular pass. Uh, ben passed the top two guys in one go, which is very unusual. So uh, we have established this group we want to see race, but they haven't really got at it yet. John Lang, a very strong race, number one on his vast performance Kawasaki. He finished fourth, looking to potentially climb up on the podium as we get a look at the rest of the starting grid here in Shannonville. Lang leading the Kawasaki charge here. We have the talk Suzuki riders. Ben Young, who joined the series at the very last minute. Rookie pro Maverick Sear leads a large group of those guys who've moved up from amateur. Andrew Cooney's another one of those. Zoltan Frass back in the series. Another young racer showing well as we move on to the rest of the grid. And we've been featuring Philip de Gamma Blanchet on another vast Kawasaki. And he had a good first official pro national yesterday. We see rows five and now six. It's Mack Wheel, Drew Weber, John Watson. Rounding things out is plenty of overtaking opportunities here in Shannonville. Yeah, interesting that where we've seen most of the overtaking is the sort of third turn along, which bizarrely is considered to be turn eight. But yesterday in our pro sport bike race off the back straight, which is demonstrating itself as turn six, that is where the big move happened. And it was a double pass for the lead that almost never occurs in any kind of large tail racing in Canada. It is a great day for racing here in Shannonville. Let's go down before the lights go out to our Bridgestone pit reporter, Sarah Said. Thanks guys. This year marks Maverick Sears' first ever full season as a pro sport bike rider and he says he's feeling quite confident. Sears says he's using the opportunity to take in as much as he can from fellow riders on his Risen Racing Triumph Daytona and says that so far he's already learned a lot and has made some adjustments, including increasing his corner speed. Last year he won both sport bike and super bike amateur championships and says that those experiences helped him learn to lead a race. Back to you. Thank you, Sarah. 18 laps here at Shannonville as it is the Apex Cycle starting lights powered by Honda. Race number two in the Pro Sport Bike Division. We're full throttle in Shannonville as away from the line. It is Tremblay trying to dive in between Vieira and Ben Young. Tremblay's away, but here they give chase. That was straight up whole shot from Tremblay from the middle of the front row. He had the edge almost immediately. Good launch from Vieira again. So Ben Young gets to have a good look at the people he knew he was going to have to deal with. Vieira, good speed here through the early part of this lap in Shannonville. Ben Young sitting on the back tire of that. Bikes to Caddy, riding his way through as the mid-pack really tightens up. They come around the hairpin and head for the back straight. That's Sear on the Triumph in fourth, right, right with our reigning Canadian Superbike Championship. And then the group battling for fifth is headed by Lang, who probably isn't happy to be that far back halfway lap-wise into the race. As it is Tromblay on the Turcotte Performance Suzuki, that group of four breaking out in front. We've seen such hard front braking here in this section throughout both the sport bike and super bike races in Shannonville. Once again, it's Tremblay hard onto that front brake. Tremblay, you can see, bouncing the front end. I don't think he meant to brake in that manner. It was a little ragged for a guy who normally is just about perfect and precise. Of course, Ben Young is the other racer in our series who has that reputation for very accurate riding, and he is in third place having a good look at that Ducati of Elliott Vieira. So we have Gen 2, 
bikes at the forefront here. The first bike from the old rules for this series would be Sear on the Triumph and then Lang on the Kawasaki. Word coming down from race control that number 99, Alex Michelle on his Speed Factory 67 Kawasaki actually had a jump start here off the top of race two. So a five second time penalty coming his way. As we see on the outside, and Elliot Vieira goes for a little bit of an adventure on the grass. Ben Young will take advantage. Yeah, Young firing past there. And I think what happened is Vieira ran off onto the area we used to refer to as the patio, uh, which happens when you're trying to get that aggressive launch. The, the drive onto the back straight is crucial. So here he's picking up the throttle. It's our second red, white, and blue bike. And he just drifts a little bit wide. He stays with it, which is probably wise. Doesn't spit him off, but he runs onto the grass and then jumps back onto the grass again. About this point, it's really looking like a serious adventure. And I think that Ben Young is thrilled not to be participating. And right here, that is a close call when you fall back off off that verge of the track and good for Vieira that he saved it and good for Ben Young that he got by. That first little wobble on the grass, he thought might be able to jump right back on, but it went on for far too long if you're Elliot Vieira and it ends up costing him second spot to Ben Young right now who sets his sights forward onto the 24 of Sebastian Tremblay. And it's amazing Vieira only lost about half a second there, which how, how that could only be half a second, I have no idea. And uh, the key now is that he's uh, in a rear guard action. This is where he was yesterday. But look at Sear and Lang, and this is a repeat of a terrific race they had in our opener yesterday. It's Ben Young sitting second behind Sebastian Tromblay. The adventures of Elliot Vieira continue. The number 33 GP Bikes Ducati sitting in position three. More from Shannonville next. Portions of the Bridgestone Canadian Superbike Championship are brought to you in part by Importations Tebow. Joe Rocket, and Pace Law Firm's Fallen Rider support team. Closed captioning for the Bridgestone Canadian Superbike Championship is brought to you in part by Lifen, MotorcycleCourse.com, Apex Cycle, and Supersonic Road Race School. Welcome back to Shandonville, working lap number four of 18. Sebastian Trombley still leading ahead of Ben Young, Elliot Vieira, Maverick Sear, and John Lang once again in that five spot, trying to get back up to at least fourth that he finished in round number one. Could describe this as status quo since that error by Vieira right through this part of the track where he wound up jumping off the curb into the area that we used to call the patio. And I think what we're now watching is Young trying to chase down Tremblay and two of the most consistent lappers in the history of our sport in Canada together. It's more of a chess battle than an open ice brawl. Uh, and it's interesting to know that Tremblay has picked up a little bit of pace, really kind of two tenths over what he was doing yesterday. Young is slightly faster, but now they're almost in the exact same neighborhood in terms of lap times. So it is going to be a tough uh, battle for Young to catch Tremblay. Maybe a little bit of motivation after taking that third into second position from Elliot Vieira as Ben Young on lap three set his fastest yet a 106.799. So Young going quickly here and maybe Tremblay will have to respond in short order. There we can see six plates to Gamma Blanchette on the Kawasaki as Sear is uh, getting teed up by Lang, it looks like, into turn eight, which has been the happy hunting ground. Wow, great shot. We've seen so many passes through that section of the track here in round one, Colin. Yeah, and uh, there we were back to the leaders, and then you can see the pass that just happened is in the background of that shot. Uh, but uh, Lang, pretty aggressive, and I think he's going to want to get clear now. His lap times have been good, but not maybe as consistent as he'd like. And here's the setup. We're going into turn two. This is the bridge onto the perimeter track. It's uh, fairly rough through here. And we've seen the last couple of years, this is kind of a Sam Garam move where you go really, really wide. But this time, Lang doesn't hold the inside. He comes back across in front of Sear, which might be a little bit of a warning to Sear about, I'm not enjoying your existence the way I might. As we get a look at some of the vast performance technical data here for round one in Shannonville. And uh, the Kawasaki is a high revving four cylinder motorcycle. You'll see over 15,000 RPM on the front straight, and that is third gear when you stand on the pit wall, as I know you sometimes do. Yep. Those bikes are just singing when they uh, start slowing down for the first corner. And Sebastian Tremblay on the Turcot Performance Suzuki just set his fastest lap 106, 815. So Tremblay does go quicker than he had through the first four laps as we sit here on lap six of 18, hitting the one third race mark, and Ben Young trying to close. 
close that gap on the back straight once again. And we got two GSXRs. They are by no means identical. Tremblay's bike basically just finished for last weekend at the regional here at Shannonville. And Young is on the bike that he took to the top Canadian placing at Daytona. Basically uh, no major modifications to the chassis or the engine. That bike's pretty much the way he ran at Daytona. Whereas Tremblay's bike has very much been tailored to our tracks. And also Tremblay's bike is built in such a way that he can make some small changes and bump up to the superbike class where he won't have quite the horsepower, but he has a really strong handling package, and we've seen that work out well already yesterday. Sebastian Trombley, a strong second place finish in race number one. He sits in first, but right now let's go down to our Bridgestone pit reporter, Sarah Said, with the team manager of Elliot Vieira, Clive Nigaki. Elliot had a good start in race one, finishing third. How has he been feeling for this race two? Well, we have made some changes on the suspension, and we're hoping that he would have done better. But unfortunately, it looks like he's been dropped back to turn. And in this race, because it's so competitive, once you lose the toe, it's hard to catch up with the top leaders. But we are much further ahead this season than we were last season. And I have to give real kudos to Elliot. He does most of the work himself on the bike which is a hard thing to do and race as well. Awesome, thank you so much. Thank you. As Vieira continues to battle his way back in, trying to re-pick up that toe, but I'm not sure the pace of Ben Young and Sebastian Tremblay are going to allow it. It is interesting them talking about the changes in the handling as we watch the front forks working away on Vieira's Ducati, because last year he, uh, I think, struggled with getting the bike to turn. I know they've made some big geometry changes, and that's partly due to some modifications physically to the bike to allow those changes, and it's early times but they are much more prepared as Clive indicated for this season so that's a good sign and some other tracks may suit them at Grand Bend last year he struggled that's the next race coming up and we're optimistic he'll have better form. Sebastian Tremblay trying to hold off Ben Young two of the very best racers in all of the Bridgetone CSBK more from Shannonville next. Welcome back to Shannonville, working lap number 10 of 18. As you still see Sebastian Tremblay finding the pace to hold off Ben Youngman. Ben also looks like he's sitting there a little bit and trying to figure out, pick and choose, calling where and when he wants to try and give Tremblay a run for his money in this race. Tremblay a little closer than when we last saw the leaders, but the lap time difference in that last tour, the one we just completed, was one one hundredth of a second. So <laughs> I'm afraid Young's going to have to be a little more aggressive. I say this as he's clearly physically closing the gap into what you know, is often referred to as turn eight, which is super confusing on this version of the track. And Young is definitely going shopping, but he is not close enough. And again, the problem is Tremblay doesn't make any mistakes and he's being chased by the other guy in the series who doesn't make any mistakes. And we talked in race one here in the Economy Lubentire Pro Sport Bike Division about basically is it Ben Young rides like Sebastian Tremblay or vice versa because these guys are so similar to each other and you can see that bearing out in the lap times here mid-race. Well, I do enjoy the fact that Tremblay is uh, getting something out of this opportunity to race Ben Young. He's excited about it and is raising his game. Not that his game was a shallow one and I'm sure Elliot Vieira, who's faded well back there. You can see him way in the back of our shot. He uh, would wish that the pace was a little bit more like it was last year. These two pushing each other as we go behind Vieira. See John Lang is sitting in fourth position after the pass on Maverick Sear, who is still in fifth. Philip Gamma Blanchett is sitting in sixth position. Nathan Playford is in seventh. Alex Michel with that five second time penalty for the jump start has made his way all the way up to eight. Zoltan Frast in ninth. And Marco Souza sits there in 10th position. As up front, you can see the splits between these two on the Scott built Suzuki of Ben Young trying to track down Tremblay once again onto the back straight. Yeah, and if you look at this battle for first, probably the next most interesting battle is the one for sixth, the Gamma Blanchette getting away from the Ducati of Playford, but they've had a good battle. And these are the young up and coming guys. And if you look in the background of the shot, Lang is not that far behind Vieira. So that is a really good sign. Lang has found a little more pace. This is a new bike for him this year. He was a winner last year on his old. Kawasaki uh, Ninja. So good to see Lang, who's kind of flying the flag of the traditional inline four cylinder first generation bikes. It's around the final corner here to begin lap number 12. It is Sebastian Tremblay in the lead. He's been working hard on this generation two bike. Let's hear from him on the development of this program. We're getting the hang of it. Uh, we've improved a lot of stuff from last year. Uh, 
Last last year we had some trouble at the, the last round uh, trying to figure out a setup for that Suzuki. But over the winter we've learned a lot of stuff, uh, internal gearing of the engine and stuff like that. So we're pretty confident we've got a pretty good package for this uh, this weekend. This interview took place just before the action really got intense here at Shannonville, and I could say that not only does he have a pretty good package, he's been working on that package, and I think that uh, the respect between the two teams that are battling for the lead right now, Young has a pretty deep crew. Tremblay has some help, but most of the effort, both chassis and engine-wise, are his time and energy, and of course, what he can afford to do at his shop when he's not working on customer motorcycles. As we run here at the end of lap number 12, four of his last six laps have been in the 106s, which are very, very close to the fastest lap that Sebastian Tremblay has set. So yeah, there's no doubt there is pace alive in that Turcot Performance Suzuki. Yeah, and two 100s difference on that particular lap. It's just remarkable how little there is in these two guys and not really any mistakes. I mean, we saw Vieira make one mistake and even that didn't punish him too much on a lap time. So in terms of consistency, very remarkable up at the front here. And as I mentioned, the next group isn't bad either, but they don't have the ultimate pace. As Ben Young once again sits here, potentially looking on the back straight. Remember in race number one, he was able to pass Elliot Vieira and Sebastian Tremblay on this back straight, but that was due in large part to them bouncing off each other, coming together as he tries to get into the slipstream on lap 13. Yeah, I doubt that Young has a plan, but he just wants to keep on coming, watch his lap board, watch his timer, and see what he can do. He's close enough that you get inspired, but the problem is what you're hoping to see is Tremblay is making a series of small mistakes, or you can be ready to pounce on one one big mistake and we've seen over and over again particularly between Tremblay and Vieira last year that those mistakes frequently don't occur. Such similar lines coming through the back end of the lap here at Shannonville on the outside layout as they head back into turn one wide sweeping right hander. Now faster corner the basic premise of time speed distance means that the lead appears to open up it's the same lap time but uh, Young maybe just a little bit faster exiting two there uh, and the question really is is there going to be a pass opportunity right where they are now is where we've seen most of the passing this weekend uh, we'll see what happens on the back straight but man there does not seem to be much difference in terms of the speed of these two Suzuki's. Grandstand enthralled here at Shannonville Motorsport Park looking to see how this one will finish between Young and Sebastian Trombley who leads. Portions of the Bridgestone Canadian Superbike Championship are brought to you in part by Importations Tebow, Joe Rocket, and Pace Law Firm's Fallen Rider Support Team. Closing stages here in Shannonville, pro sport bike race number two, brought to you by Economy Lube and Tire, as it is Ben Young sitting in second behind Sebastian Tremblay, lap number 15, and still trying to figure out where he wants to try and take his shot on Tremblay as we begin lap number 16. Battle of the GSXR 750s. Uh, the bike in the lead is built more in a Canadian spec, uh, not as restricted. The bike in second is built to the uh, Moto America rules, which is more of an electronics package that controls the performance. Both of these bikes limited to 125 horsepower on the Dino Jet Dino. So uh, really we're expecting these bikes to do almost the same thing. But boy, look at wow. that. We've been talking about that as the passing spot and Young caught up like crazy. And there we see Ben Young taking a look, decides to sit on the rear tire. Once again of Sebastian Tremblay down this back straight, but that's got to give him some confidence that that might be the spot he can go after Tremblay. Yeah, suddenly we're seeing Ben ride a little more aggressively, and uh, yet you don't normally notice that. We remember it from last year with Alex Dumas in Pro Superbike, but suddenly yeah, Ben has shortened up the wick and decided it's time to go. He barely has enough time, but he is close enough to strike. We have lack traffic coming into play. Tremblay's pit board this time will reflect that Ben is basically plus zero. And look at that, the lapper, I think has acknowledged that he needs to get out of the way. He did, but Young is really close now. The hand signals from the Sebastian Tremblay pit. Can't get any closer saying, you gotta go, man. Now is the time. Lap 17 of 18 as Young comes into this section, he's had success on. You see the split there, down from six tenths to just under four. Yeah, not quite as fast as they have been, but of course the Bridgestone tires are getting worn and they have ridden at a very considerable regular pace, the way you, your goal is to do it that way, and both of them have. Uh, now we're gonna watch Young, can he make a move? Nope, he's not gonna try yet. So the Scott Build Suzuki sits back once again, hits it, oh, and something's wrong with the Suzuki. Down goes Young, spinning around at the exit of the hairpin, 
as he grabs the bike in the middle of the track and tries to get it back up. Oh, look at look at the bike there underneath. You can see he just kicked our onboard camera. There is fluid on the ground, and that's why he fell. Uh, we'll just get a replay on that. The good news is he fell. Like Lang is not happy about having the Suzuki in his way right there. Uh, he fell a very sm short distance. He's completely leaned over here, picking up the throttle. You watch that. Something started leaking out of the left side of the bike, and of course that fluid onto the rear tire, be it uh, coolant or oil, is going to be uh, very tricky when you're all the way leaned over. As I said, the good news is he barely fell. You know, probably 18 inches is the amount of distance that he fell down. And Ben slides to a halt in the edge of the area we're back to referring to as the patio. As Ben Young makes his way back in to the pits and they start to take a look as Willie Vass is there, his dad is well looking now look, over. Now look at what's happening. He's looking on one side of the bike. Bizarrely, the leak wasn't on the side that he fell on. It's on the other side, mm. but you couldn't have expected that big an explosion of fluid. The white flag is out. Final lap here for Sebastian Tremblay, who suddenly can sit back and enjoy going through the final twists and turns of round one in the Economy Loop Entire Pro Sport Bike Division. Oh, and Tremblay chasing <laughs> the bike. Okay, that would have been the, the move for the win there if, if our uh, rival was still in play, because Tremblay actually made a mistake. And slid his way through, but now he'll slide all the way into first. His first victory of 2024, and Sebastian Tremblay fist pumps and slows down to turn around and realize he's all by himself. 13th career pro sport bike win for Seb Tremblay, and that was one of his best. Yeah, we didn't fight to the finish, but it was a good performance where he held off his arch, his new arch rival, I guess I'd have to say. We'll see how that plays out over the rest of the year. And as you can see, he's way ahead of our runner-up, who's his arch rival in the point standings on the Ducati, Elliot Vieira. Pointing at that Turcotte performance Suzuki as well. Well earned by Sebastian Tremblay as he goes on to victory here in Shannonville. Confirming our results, Lang in a solid third from Philippe de Gamma Blanchette. Fourth for the rookie pro, a teenager, is a remarkable effort. We look through the rest of our top ten. Alex Michel, the jump start with his Kawasaki, getting up to ninth is a really good effort again. Let's go down and hear from our race winner, Sebastian Tremblay, who's with our Bridgestone Pit reporter, Sarah Sand. Right, congratulations on the race to win. How did it feel taking the victory lap? Oh, it was awesome. It was really awesome. I was looking forward to this weekend to be a tough battle with Ben, and it sure was. Yesterday, we, we made a small mistake, and he took a gap, and this, this race, uh, I, I tried to take the lead and pull out and uh, try to keep the gap. He, he was closing by, and I was maintaining my, maintaining my pace, and uh, at the, by the end, uh, we, we made it to the uh, finish line. Congratulations. Thank you. Sebastian Tremblay with a great victory as he sits now 10 points ahead of Elliot Vieira in the season standings after race one. Yeah, we expected a battle between these two. Uh, Lang, De Gamma Blanchet, Sear are going to have to be looking for ways to uh, intrude in our upcoming races. Of course, different tracks with different layouts should favor other riders, but you can't help but think that Tremblay and Vieira are the guys to beat. From everyone at the Bridgestone CSBK, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.